Hi and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union. We're joined by General Secretary Matt Rack who's been doing a tour of the UK meeting up with various members to discuss the Fair Pay or Fire Strike campaign. Now Matt, there's been a number of questions getting raised by members. A lot of the same questions come up so we thought we'd cover these in this video yeah. uh, today. So first of all, a question that continues comes up from members is what does a fire strike actually look like? What's the periods of action and the intention of the union when doing that? Sam, it's, uh, look, I, I just want to say before we start, there's one task and that's to get the boat out. That before we, There won't be a strike unless we get the yeah. votes in and unless people vote for it. So people need to remember that. It's a postal ballot, make sure you vote, make sure you vote yes. What a strike looks like I think is still to be discussed and I really want members to engage in that, with, to, to discuss it in branches, to discuss it on brigade committees and regional committees, feed that through to the executive council who will make that decision. There's a whole range of views on it and we've got to take account of all those views and different challenges. So we know that taking action is hard, but so we've got to take account of that. We also know it wants to have effective strike action. So there are views about the, the length of strikes, the how often they take place, all those need to be fed through. Uh, but now is not the time to make that decision. That will be taken once we've uh, balloted and once the Executive Council have assessed all those views from across the country, as well as taking account of what are the other side going to do? What, what are yeah. Fire and Rescue Service plans of how they intend to tackle strike action? You know, you've got, you've got to deal with what the other side are going to do, as well as the views of our members. So members feed in, but no yeah. decisions taken yeah, Exactly. Yet. Okay, another question that's come up constantly now. There's a lot of other trade unions taking action across the public sector and indeed beyond. Is there an intention to coordinate that action to make it more effective? That's a really good question and a, and a very obvious one in some ways, because, look, there is uh, many, many groups of workers facing the same pressures that we are in the public sector, everyone in the public sector facing exactly the same attacks on pay. And the obvious question is, if we're all being attacked together, why don't we campaign together? Why don't we fight together? And why don't we strike together? So uh, first of all, we have our own trade dispute. We have a dispute with our employers and we need to make sure that's clearly set out and we yeah. tell our own story. And that probably means taking action on our own as well. But yes, we are already discussing with other unions, with the TUC, about how we coordinate and jointly campaign. And that may include various sorts of tactics. It could be striking together, it could be striking in the same week. I think there's a number of options that we can and we should consider, but it's definitely being discussed. I can assure people of that. OK, Matt. Now, another one that's constantly come up, this is a ballot for strike action that we're undertaking now. A lot of members are asking, is there intention after this to have a ballot for action short of strike, an overtime ban or such like? Yeah, you, just to be clear, you would have to have a separate ballot because there's forms of industrial action. Strike action is one form, uh, non-strike action is another form. So you would have to ballot separately. And the executive is clear that we need to uh, conduct the strike ballot. We need to win that, take action. But yes, the executive council has been very clear. They're keeping all options under review. And, and I know that many members have asked that question. So we will be feeding that into the executive uh, in due course uh, for consideration. OK, Matt, and now I suppose the, the big question now is the end game. What's the final figure we're looking at? Members have rejected 2% overwhelmingly and also overwhelmingly rejected a subsequent 5% offer. What offer is going to be acceptable? Well, as has just been shown by the 5% ballot, that is a matter that our members will decide. And we're very clear we're a democratic union. It's the members' campaign. It's the members' decision. Uh, you know, some people had a different point of view on the 5%, but our members have voted overwhelmingly to reject the 5%. So we're clear that uh, that is the task of the fire service employers to resolve this dispute. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's clear to us that uh, we shouldn't be taking uh, pay rises below inflation. That's another pay cut. But what we actually settle on at the end of it uh, is a matter for members to decide. So uh, like other unions, some unions have put a figure on it, many have not. Yeah. Uh, and we've d currently decided that we should not uh, and that we should um, put the ball into the employer's court and the government's court uh, to force them to make a decent offer and force the government to make uh, the appropriate funding available. OK, so it's up to the employers to make an offer that our members accept. 
Yeah, and our members will at some point decide, yeah, that does it for me. That, that, and that's the choice of the members to make at that point. Now, Matt, I know you said at the start there is one clear task for just now, and I know you want to repeat that. What does everyone need to focus on at this moment in time? It's the ballot, uh, Tam. It's, uh, it, the, uh, we can't make progress if we don't uh, conduct this ballot, if we don't uh, achieve the turnout, we don't achieve a, a yes vote in adequate numbers. Uh, it, we know what's going to happen if that happens. We're getting a 5% and frankly it means that next year we're going to get another below inflation yeah. pay offer. So to force our employers to take this seriously, to even get back in the room and talk about it, we need to make sure people vote in the ballot, that means a postal ballot as we've explained, put your, uh, tick, put your cross in the box appropriately, put it in the envelope and take it to the post box and make sure people vote, make sure your workmates do. That's the task that all of us have got over the next few weeks. Matt, thanks very much indeed.